In this show, iPhone 16's cameras go retro for the future. Epic beats Google in court. AirPods Pro USB-C case is now available separately, plus your iCave answers. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. And before we go for it, a reminder, Friday night we are streaming live again, so set your reminders right now and come and hang out. iPhone 16, and we are talking regular bargain bin uh, iPhone 16 here, not the Pro, and it's looking to get some major updates according to leaks obtained by Mac rumors. First of all, the camera layout looks like it's going to be reverting to the vertical layout that started with the iPhone 10 and was last seen on the iPhone 12. Now it seems that Apple are working on multiple prototypes, as you can see from Mac rumors renders, including going back to the pill style combined lens that debuted with the iPhone 10. This layout was originally a switch from the horizontal layout on the 7 Plus, as the extra internal depth was needed for the new Face ID system at the top of the iPhone, but this change is more likely to be in order to support capturing spatial video for playback on the Vision Pro and future Apple headsets, because your eyes aren't all wonky when you're looking at stuff. Speaking of capture, there is also a capture button where the millimeter wave antenna is currently, which is apparently capacitive too, and may retain the antenna functionality as well, because if it's going to be something like glass, then the, uh, the waves can still pass through that. This, as well as the addition of a capacitive action button on the base models, are also expected to jump to the Pro models too. But what is this capture button for? Tricky to know actually. A lot of people have suggested that it might just be a dedicated camera shutter, but that doesn't really make sense when the volume buttons do just fine when you're in a camera mode already. But I have a couple of theories. First is that as the iPhone 16 will most likely be getting the A17 Pro, or at least a variant of it, maybe just called A17, not sure, this thing is probably going to be pretty ace when it comes to gaming thanks to that hardware ray tracing acceleration. So this button could be partially at least for capturing gaming footage on the iPhone. Maybe the phone constantly keeps like a buffer of your last minute of gaming in the uh, in memory so that it's buffered and you can just tap the button when you have a great play in a game that you want to share on social. That would be a really good way for Apple to showcase how capable these things are for gaming. The other option is that it is actually for camera use, but the button is said to be capacitive, so perhaps you can start a recording, maybe in spatial video, and then slide your finger across the button to smoothly zoom in and out. Right now, you have to kind of hold the phone with one hand and then clumsily poke on the screen with the other hand to do zooming, uh, and that leads to uh, pretty shaky footage, but it could work really well if that's the case. Let me know your thoughts. Next up, according to the oratrice mechanique d'analyse cardinal, Epic Games have had a big win over Google and its tyrannical Play Store rules. Shame on you, Google. About three years ago, Epic purposely broke the rules of both uh, Apple and Google's app stores to get around the 30% cut of the proceeds from in-app purchases using Fortnite and, as expected, was promptly booted from both stores. Now, this was basically a setup so that they could call out the outrageous tax on developers while not mentioning mentioning that pretty much every other platform including Xbox, PlayStation and others had the same 30% cut to access their audience but they didn't mind it there because that's games. Now while Epic pretty much lost their case against Apple on basically the same argument on every ground of monopolistic behaviour and unfair practices even this win will probably not affect consumers for many years, if at all, because Google will almost certainly be appealing this decision too. So Tim Sweeney can carry on crying. I think Fortnite's doing just fine regardless. And back to Apple, you can now buy the USB-C case for your AirPods Pro 2 for the low, low price of $99. Now I'm not going to lie, that seems like a big ask to swap and in this case, basically equivalent port on the bottom of your case. Maybe it could charge slightly faster, but it's going to be pretty negligible because the battery is pretty small and you're not using that port for any kind of data transfer. Of course, when Apple re-released the AirPods Pro with USB-C cases uh, alongside the iPhone 15, the big focus was the fact that this added lossless support for Vision Pro users. Of course, that's in the earbuds themselves though and not the case, so unless you've actually lost your case, you're paying $100 just to change the shape of a hole in something that most people surely are charging wirelessly at this point. If you must upgrade, the way I think is the best to do it is I'd recommend selling your old ones privately, you'll probably drop maybe 50 bucks and get the revised version from Apple with the new buds as well because who knows what else that lossless capability might be used for in the future. Now, before we get to your iCave answers, if you like this video, throw me a like, but leave that subscribe button alone. It's not for you. 
Rob Lincoln asks, IK answers, what price point do you expect for the Jumbo iPad Air to be? Really interesting this. Um, I, I think Apple has kind of lost the plot a little bit on iPad at the minute. I'm hoping that next year is going to be their big reset year for the iPad. But we are hearing that the iPad Air is going to get a 10.9 inch size and a 12.9 inch size. So kind of equivalent to what we have with the uh, iPad Pro right now. My guess is it's going to be a $200 jump because the display tech is going to be the same in both and that tends to be the way that they do things between the MacBook Air 13 and 15, between the MacBook Pro uh, 14 and 16 is $200 for the screen. Now I know the starting prices are different but that's because you get different chips. Yeah, $200 seems to be their, uh, their change point if it's just a display size. But on the iPhones actually it's 100 bucks. So maybe it's going to be like 150 but my guess is going to be 200. Um, then the iPad Pros are going to go up as well, it seems, to 11 inches and 13 inches, just to be a pain, but they are going to have different screen tech, they're going to have OLED displays and stuff like that, so there is going to be a reason for that difference. I just hope that they don't start putting different sizes in everything, or maybe we're now aligning the iPad and the iPad Mini, so maybe the iPad Mini gets a price cut uh, to go alongside the iPad regular and it comes in at like 350 or 400 that'd be okay pokemon scarlet asks iCave answers why isn't there a youtube app on the apple watch and can we please get a camera for facetime my mum uh, didn't have an iphone but she has an ipad and an apple watch and she's wearing it sometimes and the ipad isn't nearby for facetime video why can't we set up the apple watch using ipads or macs yet so here we go a camera on the Apple watch for FaceTime would be an atrocious idea It would be horrible because you would a have to spend your time like this and then your watch thinks that you're trying to talk to Siri and Then your arms gonna hurt and they're looking up your nose for the entirety of the conversation It's not a good thing. It will not work. It should not happen as far as I'm concerned in terms of setting up though using iPads or Macs I don't think we should need to use either. I think you should be able to basically do everything on the watch at this point because some people might just want to have like a cellular Apple Watch if they don't want to actually have a phone with them. I think having a cellular Apple Watch if you're just making calls and replying to texts is probably okay if you're not bothered about browsing the web. Watching YouTube on it though, that is going to murder the battery life um, and the speaker on it is going to be crap. I, I just feel like it's going to be a terrible experience, but if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Pokemon Scarlet asks, I gave answers, is the iPad Air 2 still worth it in 2023? I saw a couple of them for $100. No, we have an iPad Air 2 in the house, but I need to give a little bit of context on what the Air was at that point. That was just the name for the iPad. So we had the original iPad, which had the big thick bezels and no cameras. Then we had the iPad 2, which had the big thick bezels and added cameras. So you can FaceTime and a reverse camera. Then they went to the Retina iPads and there was two of those, one with lightning and one with the 30 pin port. And then the next generation after that, they slimmed down the side bezels, uh, but left the big bezels top and bottom. And that was called the iPad Air originally, but replaced the old Retina iPads. Uh, and then the iPad Air 2 was the same. And from memory, I think the iPad Air 2 might have the same chip as like, it's like an iPhone 6. So it's pretty out of date at this point. I wouldn't recommend it as a main device by any means. However, if you just want to watch a bit of YouTube on it, you want to like watch videos or read a book or browse the web, fine. You're going to have no storage, basically. I think they started with 16 gigs. So you're really going to struggle on storage. That's basically big enough for the operating system and a couple of apps. If that's what you need them for, fine. A hundred bucks is good. Um, the display in them is exactly the same panel as in the Retina iPad, which is also what's in Project 91. But yeah, I wouldn't probably go for them as a uh, as a daily driver. Pokemon Scarlet asks, IK answers. When will the new Apple TV come out? What can we expect? Will it get a redesign? Let me know your thoughts. Okay, I don't expect it's going to get a redesign. I don't think it needs it. It's a little box that you hide away somewhere. It's not really something that you display. That's fine. It's actually got active fans in there and all sorts. What I would really hope is going to come to it is probably an A17 Pro chip because then if we've got ray tracing in there, we've got plenty of power to do a 4K display gaming on your TV 
that would be pretty good. Uh, what it does need is Apple to come out with probably their own uh, controller. I know you can use Xbox or PlayStation controllers, but that just seems a little bit jank for Apple. I think it would be really good. What some people have suggested is like, why don't they put an M3 in it? But if they put an M3 in it, it's basically a Mac Mini. And at that point, uh, it's gonna be more expensive as well. Let's be honest, uh, they're not gonna sell you a $200 M3 powered Apple TV when the Mac Mini is like 600 bucks. So I don't see that happening. But A17 Pro, that's a, a reasonable guess, I would think. Uh, and I think that will probably be maybe by the end of next year. Who knows? That seems good. So that's it for this video, guys. Don't forget the live show tomorrow night. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all the Patreons for your support. You can join them at icavedave.com forward slash Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, we now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal,